is the new Ford Transit Supervan 4. The fourth time in the last 50 years that Ford has got a little bit giddy and added a comically potent powertrain to its best-selling van. And this is the most powerful of the lot. It's got approximately 2,000 horsepower, over 1,300 pounds-feet of torque, and you guessed it, probably because you can read this sticker on the front of the van, it's electric. But first, some context. The first supervan arrived in 1971. Terry Drury Racing built the thing specially for Ford by matching up an actual Ford GT40 chassis and running gear, including a 435 horsepower V8, to the body of a classic 1965 Transit van. Supervan 2 followed in 1984, based on the chassis of a Ford C100 Group C racing car with a Cosworth DFL engine. Sure, the body was a fiberglass replica of a second generation Transit, but it featured a spoiler, air inlets, and a front air dam. And it managed to hit 174 miles an hour at Silverstone. Then came Supervan 3 in 1994. It was an evolution of Supervan 2 using the same C100 racing chassis, but swapped out the engine in favor of a wild 650 horsepower, 3.5 litre Ford Cosworth HB. A few years later, Ford changed the engine again for a less powerful 3-litre V6 to improve, you know, drivability. So there's the bloodline, but why bring back the supervan now? Well, you might remember the Mackie 1400 from 2020, a 1400 horsepower drift-tastic electric SUV, a one-off that was designed to coincide with the launch of the Mach-E. Now, Ford has just started selling the E-Transit 2. That gets only 180 horsepower in the entry-level version. But what better promo tool could there possibly be than an E-Transit with enough firepower to eat most supercars for lunch? All that power is produced by four electric motors, two on each axle, so there's four-wheel drive, although they're packaged up with a diff and a gearbox, so they don't drive each wheel individually. The battery is a 50 kilowatt hour liquid cooled pack, enough for 35 kilometers at race pace, or about a lap and a half of the Nürburgring, while there's a single speed gearbox on the front axle and a two speed gearbox at the rear, ensuring lightning acceleration off the line. 0-62 is said to take under two seconds, but also a top speed north of 200 miles an hour. Just imagine how quickly you could deliver parcels in this thing. Think about Amazon, that's all I'm saying. All right, so let's take a little wonder around this, shall we? And we'll start at the front where you've got this much more aggressive set of eyes and this full width light bar here. The issue, of course, with making a 2000 horsepower van is aerodynamics. It's basically got the frontal cross section of a bus stop. The team here refer to it as two GT40s stuck on top of one another, but they've got an ingenious solution. So all the air doesn't have to go around the van and over the top and underneath it. There's actually an intake under here and that feeds air through a massive carbon fiber tunnel that runs along the full spine of the car and then exits that air out the rear. Genius. Pretty much everything you see is carbon fiber, some of it exposed, some of it wrapped here, all the panels, all the aero add-ons. And check this out, the door is just ridiculously light. I wish you could feel that. It feels like it's gonna fly away in my hand. Now, the basic structure of this is an E-Transit Custom. They basically took one of those and then angle grinded the top half off. And then on top of that, they built a bespoke tubular space frame structure with front and rear subframes. You've got double wishbone suspension. You've also got Alcon racing brakes there. Steel rotors, not carbon ceramics, because that makes them more usable in a bigger variety of situations. And now we need to talk about the aerodynamics on this car. You've got these two enormous air tunnels that run through the back of the car and they're giving us strong Ford GT vibes. You've also got a big diffuser down there. You've got a wing stuck up on top. And all this stuff isn't just for bragging rights down the building site. It actually adds up to 500 kilograms of downforce at 186 miles an hour, which is just bonkers numbers when we're talking about a van. You can also get, I'm told, a detachable tow bar that goes down here. It's not attached at the moment and that can tow over two tons. You've got to love Ford's commitment, don't you? Inside, you're quickly aware this isn't your average spec white van. 
For starters, driver and passenger sit in racing seats with full harnesses. There's a Motec display behind the wheel and the 15.5 inch screen from a Mac E in the middle. And not a lot else. There's also this, a hydraulic handbrake. I think they called it the fun haver in the Mac E 1400, but it's actually quite an important feature this because the plan from Ford is to make the super van versatile. It can be set up for hot laps or for the drag strip or for a bit of rally punishment or for drifting about. And that's the beauty with electric motors that you can send the power wherever you want it. In terms of driving modes, well, there's three at the moment, road, track, and drag, although rally mode and drift mode are gonna be added at a later date. And you can delve even deeper than that. If you go into the settings, and we look here at, let's say, launch control settings, you can tell the computer whether you're on a road, on a circuit, on a drag strip, or you can get proper nerdy and tell it the exact grip level from 10 to 100%. And get this, down here, there's a little mode called tire cleaning. Basically what that does is lock up the front axle or the rear axle so you can spin up your tyres and scrub them off or just do massive smoky burnout. And that's the thing with this van, the possibilities are literally endless. This project will continue to develop and Goodwood is just the beginning. Now I wonder what the man tasked with driving this thing fresh out the box at Goodwood thinks of all this. That man, by the way, is Roman Duma, two-time Le Mans winning legend and holder of the Nürburgring and Pikes Peak electric lap records in the VW IDR. Roman, so do you, have you got any memories of super vans in the past? Have you ever driven any of them, any of the old ones? For sure, when I was a child, I remember, you know, yeah. I was always quite uh, surprised and impressed at the time. I remember looking, you know, with my parents, some video, <laughs> and it was quite fun. I did not expect for sure to drive, to have a chance one day to drive yeah. Supervan myself, but uh, for sure, a lot of memories. Yeah, yeah, and what's your involvement in the project then? Obviously, driver, <laughs> I'll state the obvious, but uh, how long have you known about it? When did you get involved? Well, you know, we had some talk with uh, Ford Performance, with Mark, Mark Rochebrook for, yeah, let's say quite a long time. And uh, when he spoke about it, for sure, my experience with the electric car and with the Volkswagen car yeah. was directly linked with the Superman. He, he told me, are you interested to drive this uh, crazy project? First of all, I have to say, I did not really understand what was this project. And um, we went more deep in, de in, in details and I said, yeah, it could be really excited, you know, so much power. Mm -hmm. crazy ID and also something completely different you have to, to, to say. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yes, how everything started. And you mentioned there your experience with electric cars. Of course, the, the IDR is on your CV, uh, Pikes Peak, that record at Nürburgring. What's the secret? Is there a secret to driving very powerful electric cars? At the end of the day, I think it's no secrets. You know, it's more or less, you know, when you are used to really fast car, LMB or whatever, for sure you are used to so much power, but an electric car, it's even more power. Mm -hmm. You know, I soon you will touch the throttle, you will be shocked. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is really the case, that is really the point. On top of that, at the end of the day, you have to, to adjust, to adapt your car mm -hmm. for your own style, but also how to use this power, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, two axles, you can play a lot, a lot more than you are able normally mm -hmm. to play with a combustion engine. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's why it's a lot of ad advantage in this kind of car. Mm. And uh, it's, it's really an engineer car at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. You have really to collaborate with your engineer to analyze everything to have really a fast one. Yeah, I heard um, whenever I've spoken to racing drivers, there's no such thing as too much power. Is 2000 horsepower too much power to, you know, there must be a point where actually you're trying to keep the wheels from spinning. Um, so is it too much? Well, the good point is, uh, I'm thinking just when you ask the question, at this point of my career, I drove a lot of things, yeah. <laughs> but I never drove a car with 2,000 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say, you see, something is new all the time, yeah. but uh, target for sure is to find, yeah, to, to find the grip on mm -hmm. track, you know, to use all this power. Mm -hmm. And this is for sure will be a, a key point. On top of that, you have to accept it's a van, you know, quite big, quite high. Yeah, the aerodynamics aren't fantastic on a van. I think we were, one of the guys was saying earlier, it's like two GT40s on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. hopefully we will produce two times downforce of GT40. <laughs> like yeah. that we are sure we'll be very works, fast, right? you know. Yeah. No, but 
uh, at the end of the day, you have to accept it's a van. I mean, the, the basis, if you look the underfloor, I mean, the floor, it's from the transit. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we have to work on it. But definitely, at the end of the day, you can see it. So, you know, with a <laughs> push rod and so on and so on, you know, uh, raised dampers, so wing, you know, yeah, underfloor, yeah. so we can and work on it. And as you say, yeah, this, this, this car needs some work. You're actually driving this at Goodwood Festival of Speed um, this time, well, actually, uh, just over a week's time. So, is it going to be ready? I hope it will be ready for sure. <laughs> at the end of the day, I hope I will, uh, I will be, you know, impressed at the start line, you know, yeah. when we go on power, you know, definitely. And you're, you're, you're going for the full time attack up the hill. See what, see what time you can set, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure, for Goodwood, you know, it's so <laughs> the car is so wide that uh, with uh, some, tar some corner, it will be very, very tight, definitely. Yeah. Um, but uh, we will see. First of all, you know, we have to, to be on track to show this beauty. We can say like that. I'm sure people will be shocked. Uh, first time we came in, in Goodwood some years ago with the Volkswagen, everybody was a little bit laughing about electric car. But after when they saw the car, they were all impressed. And I'm sure with this kind of project, they will be also impressed, you know, because already when you are looking at it, it's already quite impressive. Exactly. Well, we'll be watching. Um, best of luck and watch out with the the flint wall it can get quite <laughs> yeah, narrow. For sure, I remember. Unfortunately, and despite my pleading, driving it ourselves at this stage wasn't allowed, but I did persuade them to let us strap into the passenger seat. Roman, unfortunately, had to head to the airport, but we had a more than worthy replacement in Manfred Stoll. Ex-WRC driver and the man whose company starred partnered with Ford to design and build the supervan. So if any man knows it inside out, it's him. And just to be clear, there was still much calibration to be done to the batteries, the motors and all the systems that govern it all before this thing was ready to hoon up the hill at Goodwood the following week. So deploying the full performance wasn't possible. Let's just call this a taster. The first thing I'll say actually is you do sit quite high. <laughs> Anyone that thought electric cars were quiet, not this one. You can already feel the Latin D on those slick tyres is really strong. He's warming up now, going a bit faster. The car started to slide a little bit there. Let's see if we can get it, yeah. It's starting to move around. It feels, it feels like a race car. It doesn't feel like a van. Let's see here. <laughs> My word, when this thing is unleashed fully, it's going to be quite a thing. What an absolutely bonkers, bonkers machine. I love it. I love it. Ah, <laughs> oh, love the smell of tyres in the morning. Now, this is the part of the video where I'm supposed to deliver a balanced summary. Pros and cons perhaps suggest if you should actually buy this thing. Clearly, here that's absolutely not necessary for all we need to do is revel in the insanity and brilliance of a 2000 horsepower van with a race chassis and proper downforce but we must also celebrate that ford a juggernaut of a company with shareholders to keep happy can still find the time and the effort to produce hilarious one-off marketing projects like this it's a powerful tool the supervan in more ways than one <laughs>